Shalom, Shalom. All praise to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right, and double honors to our elders, which are the elders of GMS. Much love to you, brothers, to come by and watch the videos and uh, pray and watch because that's what we're ordered to do. So, Lucky, I got a little construction outside the house right now, so, but it ain't gonna stop this truth. And I wanted to say also, I just came from out of town, so lock you for not putting any videos up. But uh, we're going to get back into it. So uh, another report, they got nanotech, which is uh, another aspect of the mark of the beast. Okay, we got to start looking on that. That was an order from the elders because this mark is coming, man. And that's a, a big test. That's going to be a big test if you can... If you can't buy food, if you can't go and kick it at the club and get your drinks, all right? All that's going to be a part of this last days, and I'm going to read it. Revelations 13 and 15, and it says, and he, had power to, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause, and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, okay? So let's get into the story. Uh, breakthroughs. This morning, we're learning what's next in the fight against diseases like Alzheimer's let's start from the top this week we are looking at eye-opening breakthroughs this morning we're learning what's next in the fight against diseases like Alzheimer's cancer and diabetes Dr. Lori Klimster is the Dean of Wild Cornell Medical College he's also on the board of the drug maker Bristol Myers Squibb Robert Langer is a Koch Institute professor at MIT IT, good morning to both of you. This is an extraordinary story, and, and, and because it shows you where the future of medicine is going in one aspect. So why do you say precision medicine is the, is the future? Mm -hmm. Why mm -hmm. Precision medicine um, allows us to treat each patient as if they're a unique individual. So now that with the human genome project completed, we're beginning to not only know what the genes are, but to look at their expression. And so if we take a patient's tumor and say, this is the mutation that you have in your specific tumor, now do we have a special drug that will target just that mutation? Mm -hmm. As opposed to radiation therapy or chemotherapy, which is kind mm -hmm. of like swatting a fly with a baseball bat. Yes. And you have many fewer side effects if you can just target that tumor cell and not target the normal tissue around it. So mm -hmm. this is really a breakthrough just in the last couple of years. Dr. Langer, you are working on delivering some of these precision therapies. Explain how they would work. Well, one of the big advances is nanotechnology, that you could create nanoparticles and, say, put whatever medicines that you'd want in those nanoparticles, and then you put an arrowhead uh, you know, that would t on the nanoparticles that target it right to the tumor cell. So the idea is that you'd be able to get very, very high concentrations of the drug into the tumor or whatever other site you're going to and very very low concentrations in the rest of the body where it might cause bad side effects. Can we do that now? They're in clinical trials right now. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at Alzheimer's big concern for a lot of people. What's on the horizon for that? Because I was reading some of the statistics that one in two by the year 2050 will have Alzheimer's. True? It is true. It's, an it's a really scary fact. Over the age of uh, 85. 85. Over the age of 85. And that Alzheimer's goes all also goes into the penal gland that's why a lot of this uh, fluorinated you got them drinking coffee right here okay there's different things that you do and you can get rid of the fluoride also I, but I, I think Alzheimer's is an epidemic the latest epidemic in medicine as you said one out of two over the age of 85 are going to have Alzheimer's disease right now and the most I gave physicians he didn't give doctors because doctors are, are just War, um, are witches and warlocks, okay? That's all they, all they is. We don't have a cure for it. We can't prevent it. But what we're working on is imaging technology so that at least we can detect the Alzheimer's plaques at a very early age because 30 years before you get symptoms, you already have plaques forming in your brain. And it's most effective if we can treat people early on once we figure out what to treat them with. And at Wall Cornell, one of our scientists is working on a gene that is protective in Alzheimer's disease, and we'd love to be able to deliver that gene mm -hmm. in a precise manner to the brain, and here's where Bob's technology comes in. I mean, it seems to me there are two things going on. One, because of mapping the human genome, you're able to identify the gene and the specific gene. Right. On the other hand, uh, while that's developing, you're developing the kind of technology See, that enables you to get in there. Isn't that funny that both these people are getting funding 
from a source to where they they're they're linking technology in with so-called medicine and trying to you know attack it that's how they're going to use it as the way to come in there to be able to track you also all right target that gene mm -hmm. now is one moving faster than the other I think uh, from a research standpoint, both are moving pretty fast, but I mean, everything in medicine takes a while because you have to do clinical trials. Yeah, show us what that means. Well, th th this is an example of something we're working on that's actually now in clinical trials for osteoporosis. These are little microchips oh. that, uh, were, that we've designed that you can actually put in the body, and you can actually do remote controlled drug delivery, actually even with a cell phone. See? See? I think it's a game, man. It's coming. Wake up. Revelations 13 and 16. And he causes both small, great, rich, and poor, free, bond to receive a mark in their right hand in Karagma. That mark is Karagma in something inserted or cut. All right. So it's going to be literally inserted in. And he already said it's going to be in the body. The, the most of the technology now is going inside the body. They ain't worrying about external. They're worrying about internal medicine, which is just folly because you have herbs and different things out here. Majority of just the herbs that help you, man, that help the body. That's why the Most High created them to help us. They're our meat also, man. These 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 are madmen. Esau's a damn or reprobate. Or a blackberry or something like that. So the idea is that you have little wells. You can even put antennas uh, on, on these little chips, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you have, and you can communicate with the chip mm -hmm. outside the body, and then just say, deliver the drug at day one, day two, even while the woman's sleeping. That's actually how the clinical trial was done. Nanotechnology, wow. microchips, thanks to you both. Look at that fucked up smile that lady had. You see that shit? And then now, another story we're gonna get into. Since you people seem to think that the Catholic Church, because I had some 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 folly dude try to come and fight me over the 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 truth that I was pushing which we know that you know that's going to come with it but also they won't go fight these catholic church these catholic priests that are out here raping kids and having all types of madness go on so now I found a story the most high Yahweh Bashem Yahushai brought me the story to bring out okay so I mean, I found it, so I thought it'd be evident for you guys to see. And then we're going to go on the script. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this special report from Rome with more details on reports of a homosexual prostitution ring involving some Roman clergy with ties to the Vatican and young teenage boys complete with accusations of Satanism. The Italian media began reporting earlier today on a group of homosexual priests and possibly some bishops being investigated by Roman police and prosecutors for their involvement in a network of young teenage male prostitutes. Details are now coming out that one of the recruiters from the ring, a former Roman policeman, was also involved in stealing consecrated hosts and selling them to Satanists in and around Rome. The reports first surfaced following admissions from a former priest 46-year-old Patrizio Poggi, who served five years in prison here in Italy for child sexual abuse. Early indications are Poggi went to contacts he had at the Vatican and asked to be reinstated as a priest. When he was refused, he became irate and blew the whistle, revealing everything he knew. He named names and even took along one of the young men who was a former prostitute to corroborate his story. He provided police with videos and still pictures as well. In addition, two senior Vatican churchmen accompanied him to the authorities to back up his story. Poggi reportedly told police there are somewhere between 10 and 20 pedophile clerics in the ring and included among them